Hello everyone, my name is Ofri Jeremiah and in today's lesson we will be talking about quadratic equation by completing the square method. At the end of this lesson, we will be able to have learned how to identify a quadratic equation, understand the rules of quadratic equation by completing the square method, as well as solve quadratic problems by using completing the square method. So what then is a quadratic equation? If I may ask, it is an equation of the second degree, meaning it contains at least one term that is squared. What do I mean by that? For instance, if I'm to have it, if I'm to write an equation, let's say x raised to power three plus x raised to power two plus x equal to zero. This expression is not a quadratic equation. It's not. Because the highest degree, the highest power here is 3. So it's very wrong. Okay? Any equation where the highest power or the highest degree is greater than or less than 2, then it's not a quadratic. Maybe it's a polynomial or something else. Okay? A standard quadratic equation is of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero all right where a b and c are constant or the numerical coefficient like two three four five six okay and x is the unknown variable okay so in a more as we understand and can identify a quadratic equation there are also rules of solving quadratic equation by using computing the square method. You need to understand the rules because most times they may say you must solve it with computing the square, not factorization, not graphical, not formula method. What do we do? We go by the rules. We say rule one says transform the equation so that the constant term c is done is alone on the right hand side. All right? For instance, we have equation one. We have equation 2. Alright. Equation 1 does not have a coefficient of x squared. The coefficient of x squared is 1. So me writing 1x squared mathematically is very wrong. Okay. But for equation 1, we have coefficient of x squared which is a. Alright. So, back to rule 1. What do we do? When solving equation 2, we move minus 7 to the, the right hand side of the equation, we have plus 7. Alright? Root 2 says if the coefficient of x squared is not equal to 1, then divide both sides by a. We don't have a problem with equation 2 because the coefficient of x squared there is what? 1. But in the case of equation 2, the coefficient equation 1 rather, the coefficient of x squared is a. So we divide both sides like what the rule is saying. Divide both sides by a. That's what root 2 says. Alright. Then, root 3 says, look for how the coefficient of x. Square it and add the answer to both sides of the equation. That is, what is the coefficient of x, not x squared? x is what? 6. 6, he says, look for half of it, which is what? 2. So, 6 divided by 2 is 3. He says, square it, add it to both sides of the e equation so that's how we have our equation which is x squared plus 6 plus what root 3 says that is half of 6 is 3 we square it and add it yet 3 squared 3 squared at both sides of the equation all right root 5 says root 4 rather says we should take factors of the left side as the square of binomial that is it's saying we should collect like terms every expression that has square we should collect them group them together okay doing that we have x plus 3 all square equals to 16. How do we get 16? 3 square is 9. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 7 give us 16 at the right hand side. Left hand side we don't need 6x because it gives back to 3x square. Alright? So we group them together. Rule 5 says take the square root of both sides. Alright? So we have to square both sides of the equation. That's what he's saying. So that's how we got this. Okay? 
Now, 2 is going to cancel square. So we are left with x plus 3. Remember, still remember your coefficient, your indices, where if you have x square, it's the same thing as saying x raised to power 1 over 2. All right, so where we have x plus 3 all square, then we want to add the square root. What do we do? It becomes raised to power 1 over 2. All right, where 2 is going to cancel 2, so that's how we got this. Okay, so what we need to do is to solve for x. All right, so x becomes minus 3 plus or minus 4. Remember, we're having plus or minus 4 here because it is a quadratic equation. Qua, quadra, that is, we're going to have two answers. Okay, so the two answers are minus 3 plus or minus 4 equal to 1. That's number 1. Then the second part is x equals to minus 3, all right, and minus Four, which is 7. So our answer becomes 1 or minus 7. Alright, so at this point, I believe we've been able to learn how to identify a productive equation. We'll be able to understand the rules of productive equation when you're solving using completing the square method and as well as solve productive problem using completing the square method. If that has been established, then let's see how we can try this out by solving this exercise. 4x squared minus 20x minus 6 equal to 0. Solve it by using completing the square method to see if you really understand what we are learning. Thank you very much and bye.